Hey y'all, so I did the poll about what type of piggyback, piggyback perm y'all wanted to see. So the, it was funny because I did the video and it's about a 50-50%. And uh, I always say that, you know, every time I do a poll, it's always 50-50. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna do it both. Right? I was gonna do both anyway, but I guess in this sense, it's gonna be whichever one is the highest I'm gonna upload first. And it looks like the one that uh, everyone chose was the smaller rod uh, on the scalp and then the larger rod on the end. And what this does right here is this makes it so you get more root lift and you get more uh, texture. And again, when you have very long hair, and again, this is mannequin right here, I would say she's just past eight inches. When you have hair that's eight inches or longer, that's typically when you're gonna wanna use a specialty wrap. That's because if I have very long hair like this, and I take a smaller rod and I try to wrap all of this hair in the rod, what's gonna happen is that that rod that's about that small is gonna get wrapped with hair that much. So you're gonna have hair that is not true to rod size, it's gonna look off. And the other issue on top of that is the fact that saturation. If I take a huge chunk of hair and I wrap it around this teeny little uh, baby pink rod, what's gonna happen is, how am I gonna saturate, right? I can only apply the waving lotion like this back and forth so much on a rod and it's only gonna hit about the top few layers of the hair. And again, I've heard some people will take the bottle and they'll shoot it in a little circle, and that can work too. However, it's more efficient to do a specialty wrap. In this case, we're doing the piggyback perm. In the piggyback perm, you're doing two rods, two or more rods, because on very, very long hair, you can actually do three or more. You're doing um, two rods and you're gonna be wrapping to get the desired uh, look. And if you do larger rods um, at the scalp and then smaller rods underneath, you're gonna get snug waves at the scalp followed by a nice uh, graduated curl at the end. It kind of looks like you curled your hair. Um, looks a little bit more Victorian era like, which is pretty neat. This one is gonna be more for volume and uh, even, it'll give you like even texture, but you'll get more volume at the root and you'll get, um, you know, more versatility for styling that way and great for blowouts and all that. So starting off, I've sectioned the mannequin and the perm I'm gonna be using for this mannequin is going to be Zotos Warm and Gentle and this is an endothermic perm. Now remember back to the science, endo need dryer heat. So we're gonna be using a hooded dryer. I'm gonna be applying uh, to both rods and I'm gonna be putting it under the dryer for about 25 minutes. So I'm gonna get started right here. And I'll wrap uh, two for y'all so you can see and I'll come back when it is all finished and wrapped. So I'm gonna take And again, when you're doing this technique, you could do both the same rods, you can do uh, a size below it, but for this one, I believe it's important to do two or three sizes in between. And doing this gives you this really cool look. So you can even go a size smaller and do a blue rod if you wanted to. So I'm gonna get two end papers. One of these days I'm gonna hire like a crewman for doing my work. Take a section that is about the size of the rod. And with these mannequins, I know it's a little bit more challenging. We're gonna be doing a double flat wrap, so two end papers. And there are different ways to do a piggyback perm. This one is gonna be wrapping uh, from the ends up, which is just one method. There's another one that you could do, and it, it's basically taking halfway through the hair. Just got that hair over there. And I actually do a little bit of a weave. So when I do the weave, it makes it so there's less uh, visible splits in the hair and it's a little bit more natural. And you are gonna be using picks for this and I'll come back and show that. I'll do the application. of the perm. Okay, so starting out, I'm gonna start wrapping. And it's important when you have the perm and you're wrapping this, that you wrap it to about halfway, the, halfway through the hair. So probably about right here, right? I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take a paper and put a paper underneath. I'm 
going to put the pink rod underneath. I'm going to take this rod here and I'm going to fasten it. So when I fasten it, I'm going to put the, uh, the band right across, right across the perm rod. And I'm going to take this rod and I'm going to tilt. And I'm going to use it kind of like a crank. And I'm going to use that to kind of just gently pull the perm rod up to the scalp. It's a little tricky, but once you get the hang of it, it is a really nice technique. And what you're going to be left with is two rods. I'm going to go fasten this one. Two rods like so, and you're going to fasten. And I'm going to repeat this another time right down here. And with these mannequins, it's the hairline and the top that's a little tricky because they put so much hair on the hairline. It's like, I don't know a single person that has that much hair at their hairline, but it is what it is. And again, um, perm solution matters. It really depends on what you're using. Typically, um, a thio-free perm is just the best. So if anything thio-free that produces a medium curl is important, but again, that's consultation. If your guest is looking for something that is a bit more vintage, I would go with a standard cold wave because that produces the traditional, um, traditional perm that is extremely uh, voluminous and uh, firm. So it's really up to you as the hair artist to make that decision with the client consultation. And again, wrap halfway, snap the rod into place, Gonna go around and get another rod. And paper underneath. Turn the rod and use it as a crank to take the hair right to the scalp. And fasten. You're fastening the rod right across the perm rod, and then you're going to be putting the band, the, I mean, that band pick throughout each, and this keeps the rods all stable. Repeat this all throughout. I personally section the hair kind of freely, but you can do the traditional nine section perm, nine section uh, sectioning for a perm if you so choose, and that is going to be that. Okay, so now that I have this um, mannequin all wrapped, here's just a quick look. I'm gonna stabilize some of the rods with uh, picks. And what the picks are gonna do is they're gonna, hold, um, they're gonna hold the bands in place. So it does two things. It makes it more stable when you have the, uh, the rod stabilized and it also makes it so that the mannequin doesn't get dense in the hair from the chemical softening and swelling the hair. Um, because what happens is that you soften and swell and the band can produce a mark or a dent in the hair at best and at worst it can produce breakage. So let me show y'all what the perm I'm using is. I'm going to be using Zotos Warm and Gentle. This produces uh, medium to soft curls. It's an extra body acid perm for resistant fine or gray hair. It's a little bit more firmer compared to the other options that Zotos has for this, uh, this brand. I actually really like Warm and Gentle. It's great for older clients. It's great for clients that you know have arthritis because a perm is a pretty torturous procedure. I'm not gonna lie there. And it's actually a four part perm. Waving lotion, your activator for your perm. And this is a technique that I like to tell people to do is take your activator for your perm and your waving lotion and set them aside separately. When you do that, you're actually preventing uh, from accidentally mixing the thermalizer, which is uh, mixed with the neutralizer, and it says it on there. Now the thermalizer, um, it's really weird because it does contain MEA, and you all know my opinion on MEA for the hair because it's not the best chemical to use, but it is what it is, and that's what you mix it with the perm. Could you mix it without the thermalizer? Of course you can, but you know, following the instructions, you get the best result. So this is a, um, True acid perm, a 6.7 pH, they say it on the label, so you know that it is true. And you um, process it under a hooded dryer, I have that set up. So I'm gonna go put the, some more picks on. 
And again, a funny story is I checked every single beauty supplier for picks. It's like crazy because like almost no one has them. So I'm gonna go in like so. And the mannequin's gonna look like a, a bit like a pin cushion. Just take your picks in like so and you just slide it right in there. And I am almost done. All right, and now we are ready to apply. So I'm gonna go get the dryer all set up and I'll be right back for the uh, mixing of the perm and the application. I'm just gonna lower this mannequin stand a little bit. And again, cotton protects the client's face. I always try to put a little bit so if it drips or the, the client tilts, it absorbs in. Now as a rule of thumb, remember, I always start applying from here down. I start because it's a double perm. You might need two, uh, two perm boxes. I have one that should be enough because this is like just the average length of hair. If the client has very, very long and very thick hair, like she's like Chewbacca's mom, get two boxes, maybe even three. And you want to charge accordingly with this and I'll cover that later on. Now it's very important when applying the perm, you would start in the back, you apply, uh, I do one swipe across each rod and then I go back to do a second one. This perm is activated by a dryer. So in part, it's mixing the perm. The dryer is what accelerates that reaction. And I'm gonna go read the box and see how long, I think it's like 20, 25 minutes under the dryer. This mannequin is decently resistant. And when you uh, have it under the dryer, you're gonna do a test curl. This is a test curl required perm. It's a little bit difficult because you have to take the dryer off, remove the cap, and you uh, unwind it um, one, one and a half times, one and a half to two and a half times to check for a curl. Because this is an acid perm, it's not gonna be a really pronounced roping or an S shape. It'll be more like a C shape. So that is going to be that. Okay, so I have the dryer going, and now with the application, I'm gonna show you all how to do this. Uh, the waving lotion activator absolutely stinks. It smells like roadkill, <laughs> kind of like roadkill skunk. And this kind of just smells like ammonia -y. It's really interesting. So you're gonna mix your activator into your waving lotion and you're gonna do that very carefully. So I'm gonna pour that in like so. And this doesn't smell nearly as bad as like the other perm, it's more egg-like. So you're just gonna swirl the bottle around. I usually just tilt it a few times. All right, so I'm gonna start the application and I'm gonna start it right up here. So I'm gonna start with doing one swoop across each rod. One and one. Okay, start right over here.
And again, you're just applying very carefully. Sometimes it helps if you get a towel to apply this. Okay, so now I'm going to apply to the side. I already applied to the front. I'm going to go back and I'm just going to make sure that I got every single rod. Just give it one nice swipe across each rod. And again, you always want to ask the client how they feel. If there's any um, you know, itching, burning, irritation, that's something that you want to address. And usually you'll see like the perm looks a little filmy when it's on the hair. Um, that's totally normal. That's usually a sign that, you know, the chemical has been fully saturated. All right, so now we're gonna use the bag. Shockingly, I think we even had more than enough, which is a great thing. So you're going to fit all the rods underneath the cap and then you're going to put the mannequin under the dryer for 20 minutes. Okay, so here's an example of the test curl. So the mannequin is, by the way, very warm. So I'm going to take this rod right here, which is the white one, and I'm going to unwind one and two. I'm going to push up. See how the hair right there is roping? 
it's producing a very nice light uh, light C shape. That's how you know that the perm is ready. So again, push up. I'm gonna wrap it right back up and get it ready for rinsing. The picks also help because I had one rod right here that decided to snap on me. So I'm gonna see if I can refasten that. We know it's ready in the front and I'm just gonna check one in the back. Take the pick out here. And unwind one and two and push up. And it looks like she is all ready to go. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I've rinsed the mannequin for five minutes and I've towel blotted. Um, what I also like to do is after I towel blot really well, I just kind of let the client uh, air neutralize for about 10 minutes, let her walk around the salon, uh, go get a cup of coffee. If she's a smoker, she can go out and have a smoke or a vape or whatever. Um, you know, because it's a pretty torturous procedure. And what I'm doing now is I have my neutralizer and I have your my thermalizer. This says right here, mix with neutralizer, and I like how the um, the bottle here makes it a little bit more um, different in terms of like, you know, writing. It's very important that you never mix this with the waving lotion because it does nothing. It won't activate the perm. There was a situation at the school that I taught at where a student had hair that was super, super long, and they did a spiral wrap with very small rods. It was actually a size smaller than this. So the client was there for like easily almost two and a half hours of getting wrapped and the student applied the perm. It was supposed to be an acid balance perm, where you, no, an acid perm where you mix the activator and they did not mix the activator. So they put the solution on the hair for nothing. And the client sat there for the processing time of 30 minutes. The student rinsed the hair, she neutralized, and then she took out each individual rod for nothing. The client was livid, the student was so disappointed, and the client had to come back for a perm. Then you gotta remember, you put the hair through the ringer like that, it's gonna be more compromised. So it's gonna be uh, less likely the perm will take, you know, it might not process as long. It's really stressful for the student and client. So again, make sure you're always looking at processing time. So now that we've got that, um, your thermalizer, you're gonna put this into the, uh, the neutralizer, it's going to get warm. So just, you know, be mindful of that. And this is like super nice for the client because the client is able to, you know, relax. I just wish they wouldn't use MEA. They would find like a nicer, um, you know, thermalizer agent. So again, I'm just going over each individual rod with the neutralizer. I'm gonna save a little bit of the neutralizer in the bottle and I'm gonna use that because I'm gonna neutralize the client five minutes with the rods on and I'm gonna put a little bit in the hair after I neutralize.
one sec. I have a rod that's running away from me. Simply gently roll it back up. Yeah, these rods I got from Diane, they're horrible. They, they break like crazy. So Diane, com the company Diane, if you're watching this, you gotta get better perm rods because the ones that they sell do not do their job. Make sure you get each rod top and bottom. process for five minutes. Okay, so now it's the moment of truth. I'm gonna start with unwinding the uh, smaller rod, or not the smaller rod, the bigger rod. And I try to take the end paper off, then I go to the smaller rod and I remove it there. and just gently unwind the rod. Working quickly. I'm going to take the neutralizer and I'm going to work it through the hair and just scrunch up. And I'm going to rinse for five minutes. You can even get an assistant at this point to help you take the rods out, assistant or a friend, um, because it is a very monotonous process. And doing this helps to ensure that you fully saturate with the neutralizer. But if you have a client that is more resistant, uh, I mean not resistant, yeah, the hair doesn't hold the curl as well and they tell you that, then you might want to rinse on the rods. But these mannequins, when they perm, they're usually uh, pretty solid. Lesson learned, do not use the Diane rods. They really are horrible. Not only do they snap, but once you snap them in, um, it's like pulling teeth to get them out. Take a little neutralizer. And scrunch it in.
and the mannequin is ready to be rinsed. All right, y'all, so this is the finished result. After using the piggyback perm with smaller rods on top and larger rods on the mid shaft and ends. And I was actually very impressed to see that the endothermic perm or the dryer heat perm produced such a great result and the curls are really resilient. I was not expecting them to be um, firm. They're, they actually are a little bit more on the firmer side. Again, because the uh, this perm is not necessarily true to rod size and it is a little bit more uh, loose. Take that into account when you're wrapping hair, especially with long hair. Long hair might pull the curl a little bit larger than normal because of the weight of the hair. So if you think that you know, you're know you using a, a medium rod, you might get more of a wave and you know vice versa. If you're using a smaller rod, you might get more of a medium curl. So take that into account when you're doing this. Uh, it's a bit of a challenge to get it right the first time, but you know, if you practice on mannequins and you have an idea of not only, you know, what chemical you're using, but what curls the hair produces, that also helps you be in the better position. So this type of perm, it produces a nicer result. It gives you more root lift and uh, body. I have not combed this mannequin out or teased it, but it already has a lot of volume. And if I tease it, it's going to be like, you know, Dallas, Texas kind of hair or the Texas hair where it's big and, you know, the higher the hair, the closer to the Lord. So right in back, you can see that right back here. She's got a ton of uh, body and root lift. I'm going to go and turn this mannequin around for a side profile. And you can see the root lift, root lift right up top. She's got a ton of root lift. And I like how it gives you root lift up on, top, up on top and it cascades out into a nice, you know, medium curl. Let's take a look at how nice that looks. So I'm going to go and I'm going to show everyone up close. Now you can massage the scalp. This, the lines that you're seeing there are not going to happen on a normal head of human hair. That's just because this is a mannequin. But just take a look at some of these curls, right? Look at how nice that is. And the curls just spring right back when you pull on them gently. This gives such a nice look. It doesn't produce any frizziness to the root. It kind of looks like, you know, her hair is finger waved a little bit. So I really like that. You can comb it out on top and tease it for extra volume. It's all around a very nice versatile perm. Now be in mind on hair that is a lot longer than this, you know, it might be a little bit uh, difficult, especially with smaller sizes to wrap. So take that into account with perms and saturation. I used uh, an entire bottle and I had enough uh, only because the hair was slightly finer compared to the thicker one. However, if you're using, um, you know, a perm on hair that is super long, even longer than this, you might need two or three bottles. It depends on a lot of situations. If you are lotion wrapping the perm for very resistant hair, I would even argue you might need up to four bottles of perm solution because saturation is key. And again, when you're putting the mannequin under the dryer, I tend to do medium, but the box that had put it on high heat, so I ended up doing that with my steamer. I'm actually in the process of getting a new uh, hair dryer because my old one uh, broke down. So please, if any of y'all are watching this, consider giving me a tip and subscribing and just sharing this video because the more subscribers, the more views, the better. I put all the funds that I get that I make on YouTube to getting uh, new content on here. I put it all towards mannequins, all towards getting new tools. I do want to do a video on the loop rod perm, so I need to save up to get the materials for that so I can do one for y'all. But this perm is definitely a great perm. I recommend uh, the Zotos Endothermic Perm. I wish that more brands would have a true acid wave because it gives us more control as a stylist to be creative and use the science to create art because perms are art and science. The client's hair took really well to it. There was no shedding, there was no damage. The hair felt very healthy. And for an acid wave, I was very impressed with how well this performed. It actually performed much better compared to the body wave or the regular uh, quantum acid wave, the gray or pink box, either one of those. This produces more of a firmer curl. So I also want to mention too, it's important to know that when your client has uh, longer hair and you do a tighter look on them, make sure you tell them that it's going to make their hair appear slightly shorter. This mannequin looked a lot longer before, but because the hair is waved and curled, she is shrunken in length. I kind of use the example, like someone has a one inch, um, you know, afro, 
that one inch is really more like probably two and a half to three and a half inches uh, when you flatten it. So just know that when you uh, perm a client, they might complain that they've lost length. They really have not. So that is it for this look. I hope you all enjoyed this and any questions, just comment down below. One last final look. I'm gonna probably do a style with this mannequin and do like a video on just like perm styles or how to style it. This is just a simple wash and go. I know she's got that bit of a, you know, emo fringe going there, but those are those mannequins for you. All right, y'all have a fantastic week and I will see y'all soon with another video on perms. Next up will be a, a body wave on hair that is uh, slightly damaged. And I'm gonna show y'all how to properly do a perm on damaged hair when you don't have a thio-free perm and the only perm you have is a acid uh, perm. So that will be either a fail or either a success depending on what works. I'm gonna be doing a protein treatment on the mannequin. So that will be an interesting one.